We're now heading to the most famous museum of all in Florence, which is the Uffizi. It holds the finest collection of Italian Renaissance art. You have to wait online to get in, but you can bide your time by skimming through a book that you've just purchased about Florence, or talking with some strangers online, or chatting with your friends that you've come to see the exhibit with. In this case, we've come with our Hawaii Geographic Society tour bunch. We're traveling through Europe, and Florence is one of our main stops along the routing. We spend several days here, and while we're in Florence, we always make it a point to go into the Uffizi. And let me just tell you why. The main art museum in Florence is the Uffizi Gallery. You have to stand online to get in there generally, but it's worth the wait. Here we are, we've been waiting about 25, 30 minutes, and we'll be in in just another five or 10 minutes to the Uffizi. Following the feats into the Uffizi, one of the first paintings you'll see is Michelangelo's round tondo of the Holy Family. You'll see Caravaggio's Bacchus, the god of wine, and Piero della Francesca's Duco Verbino and his wife. Spatial depth and human warmth and personality are some of the fine elements that come together here in the paintings of the Renaissance. Perhaps the most interesting group of paintings is by Botticelli, especially The Birth of Venus and Primavera. These two great works of art hang proudly in the Uffizi and they are something that you must see. Botticelli lived and worked in Florence during his entire career, except for a couple of years when he was painting frescoes in the Sistine Chapel. He was born in 1445 and lived through 1510, and he has come to represent the essential early Renaissance painter. He worked for the Medicis, although not exclusively. Here's his Annunciation. His elegant, archaic, and allegorical works often took their themes from ancient mythology as well as biblical tales. He portrayed angelic faces and captured exquisite beauty better than nearly anyone in the history of art. Notice the gossamer wings and the fine folds of fabric and the beautiful landscape behind. He was a contemporary of Leonardo da Vinci whose Annunciation also hangs in the Uffizi. This is perhaps the grandest and most complex painting ever created by Leonardo. Of course, it's not his most famous. That award goes to the Mona Lisa hanging in the Louvre. But the Annunciation shows all of the power and skill of this greatest master of the Renaissance. He painted these angels, and legend has it that his master, Verrocchio, gave up painting when he saw how fine the work of his student had become. This red octagonal gallery called the Tribuna provides an outrageous feast for the senses. It has a mother of pearl dome with an octagonal shape that's somewhat reminiscent of the great dome designed by Brunelleschi for the Duomo Cathedral in the heart of town. The statues are copies of early Greek masterpieces the wrestlers are a marble copy of a bronze original of the school of Pergamum from ancient Greece. The dynamic, realistic pose is typical of the statues of classical Greece. The knife sharpener is the only surviving replica of an original also by the school of Pergamum. And you'll see the Medici Venus in this room, which is the most famous statue in the Uffizi and many other great works line the corridors and the different rooms in this great museum. They've made a real effort at the Uffizi to expand the hours that it's open, so it's much more accessible now. It's best if you can go in the afternoon, say about 2 p.m. or 3 p.m., and this way you can avoid the crowds. Our group of travelers from Hawaii really enjoyed their visit to the Uffizi. And it's interesting to walk through together as a small group so that you can share ideas and discuss some of the history of the pieces that you're looking at. The Uffizi is just next to the Piazza della Signoria as we quickly admire the statues once again, including the equestrian bronze of Cosimo done by Gian Bologna. And then it's into the narrow back alleys of the city 
This part of Florence between the Palazzo Vecchio and the Duomo still retains much of its medieval character. Many of the buildings are 500 and 600 years old, and the street pattern reflects the grid system created during the late medieval and early Renaissance times. This peaceful cloister is attached to the Church of San Lorenzo, which was designed by Brunelleschi in the early Renaissance. He developed here a new theory of geometry and proportion based on humanistic canons of architectural beauty rather than the flamboyant elements of the late Gothic period that had degenerated into more of a formalistic approach. In the Renaissance, we see the emphasis on simple geometric forms. At the back of the church, we find the Medici Chapel. This is a mausoleum that holds the remains of six of the Medici rulers. It was designed in the early 1700s by the son of Cosimo I, and yet it took nearly 200 years to complete all the details, and the final touches were not added until this century. You see the large coffin sarcophaguses, and there's a huge dome that's somewhat reminiscent of the earlier Duomo by Brunelleschi. Frescoes on the interior painted in the early 19th century by Pietro Benvenuti. Now here's an inside tip. Be sure to walk behind the altar and take a right down a narrow corridor because that will lead you to the bones of the saints. These rooms of reliquaries on each side of the altar are easily overlooked by the passing tourist, but they're well worth your while. Bones of the saints are felt by some to have curative powers and can help cleanse the soul. These reliquaries were presented to the church by Pope Clement VII. And whether or not you believe, these are fascinating items, and they are held in some very decorative vessels. Another fascinating room in the Church of San Lorenzo is the new sacristy. This was built by Michelangelo. He designed the architecture, and he also carved the statues. He created this funerary chapel for the Medici family in the 1520s and the 1530s. Here you see the Duke of Urbino in a pensive pose. He's the grandson of Lorenzo the Magnificent, and below him, the figures of dawn and dusk. On the other side of the chapel, we have the figures of day and night surmounted by the son of Lorenzo the Magnificent, the Duke of Nemours. These are comparatively insignificant members of the Medici family, but they made wonderful subjects for the master Michelangelo to create some of his finest statues. So realistic you can see these characters still walking the streets of the city today. It's a contemplative spot, despite the small crowd of tourists who's ever present in the new sacristy, but it's a fitting climax to our visit to the Church of San Lorenzo. Piazza San Marco is one of the city's busiest. There's a bus stop here, there's a university on the square, interesting fountain in the middle, and the convent of San Marco and the Church of San Marco are also located right here. It's just on the edge of town, and if you're at the Academia Museum, it's only a block away, so it might be worth your while. If you've wondered what the Cathedral Dome looks like inside, there is a small model with a cross section that's found in the Museo del Duomo, which is located just behind the cathedral. And you can see the inner shell and the outer shell that was designed by Brunelleschi. This museum contains quite a few statues, as well as a lot of the artifacts from the construction of the Cathedral Dome. And the masterpiece here is Michelangelo's late Pietà. This was designed to go on his own tomb, but it never got there. Instead, it's been on exhibit in the main cathedral, and for the last 15 years, it's been here in the Museum of the Duomo. Another highlight is the playful series of wall friezes carved by Della Robbia. These originally were part of a choir loft in a church in Florence. And they illustrate with vivid, lifelike energy children making music, singing and dancing, playing with their musical instruments, and enjoying life. 
Some of the figures are drawn from classical models of ancient Greece and Rome, and they are exquisitely carved within their architectural frameworks. You can almost hear the music in stone. There's a similar series on another wall by Donatello, but not quite as happy or quite as lifelike. However, Donatello's masterpiece of Mary Magdalene is here. It's one of the oldest carved wooden sculptures still surviving from the early Renaissance. Another fascinating artifact are the original bronze doors of the baptistery carved by Ghiberti. They were outside on the baptistery doors for hundreds of years and have just recently been taken in. And now on the baptistery we see here the copies that were made by the Freely Gallery. We were in the Freely Gallery in our previous show and they made copies from the original molds of the baptistery doors. And they look very nice and very clean. Here's Ghiberti himself in a self-portrait appearing in the middle of his own work, The Gates of Paradise. But the originals have even more beauty and more depth to them, more character. So go to the Museum of the Duomo if you have time. It's behind the cathedral. It's a small museum and it has those exquisite treasures that will further enhance your trip to this art capital of Italy. It's the leather capital of Italy also. In Florence you'll find leather-bound books and you'll find some great shoes and bags and belts and gloves and a whole variety of other kinds of stores. Here's an antique brass shop. It looks like it's been here for 400 years and it probably has. Certainly the kinds of items that it has for sale here have been around for a long, long time, aside from the electrical light bulbs. Brass lanterns, brass pots and pans, antiques in all price categories. Perhaps you could find something very small and affordable to pack in your suitcase and take home. Rush hour here is fascinating to watch because it's much different from anything that you'll find back home. Right away you notice that nearly all the drivers are on two wheels. There's mopeds and bicycles and motorcycles and motor scooters of all sorts. And of course you've got cars and, and people riding buses. There's no subway in Florence. It's a rather small city population under one million. So nearly all the commuters here get by on two wheels. And it's a great way to squeeze even more vehicles into these narrow streets. But watch your step as a pedestrian. They might not always watch where they're going here. This really only happens for about 45 minutes at rush hour in the evening and in the morning when it's quite so busy. Most of the day, Florence is rather peaceful. And in large parts of the city, there's no motor vehicles allowed at all. It's strictly for pedestrians. But watch your step at rush hour. And after rush hour, the city settles into twilight. Spotlights brighten the building facades, such as here at the church of Santa Maria Novella. And it's time for dinner. Chinese food? Well, sure, why not? Coming from Hawaii, you might be missing your rice after a few days of pasta on the road. And there's always a healthy selection of Chinese restaurants to pick from any place in the world. And particularly right here in Florence, just across the street from the hotel we're using, a couple of nice Chinese places. Chinese. They even have ravioli here, some Chinese dishes with an Italian accent. Food is good and the price looks right, but let's see how much JJ and Carrie paid for their dinner. So how much? 23,000. 23,000. How much is that? Oh, about 15 dollars, I guess. 15 dollars. 18 dollars? Dinner for two? 18 dollars? Yeah, not bad at all. There's the bill. Cheap. There it goes, say goodbye. <laughs> nice view of the Church of Santa Maria Novella also. 
Of course, you really want to have some Italian food, and there are over a hundred fine restaurants to pick from right in the center of town. And this is typical of the smaller, inconspicuous places. It doesn't even have its name out front. You have to know where to find it. This is on Via Belladonna, just in the center near Piazza Santa Maria Novella. And in this neighborhood, there are dozens of restaurants. There's probably two or three restaurants on every block. All you have to do is walk around, look at the menus, look in the window, see how good the food looks, see how fresh the salads are, and see if there's any happy diners inside. In many restaurants, you'll find the antipasto tables is in buffet style, and you can just take your pick, eat whatever looks good. One of the tricks for finding a good restaurant is to take a walk about 8 p.m., 8.30 p.m., which is when the restaurants start to get busy, and find one that looks lively, where the people are eating and have smiles on their faces. It might be best to avoid those restaurants that are super packed or super empty, but in between with a few diners and some open tables is certainly a welcome and inviting meal. Another real good Chinese place we found near our Hotel Baglioni is the Peking Restaurant. Next, we have many, many foods. Uh, like uh, Pekingese, Shanghai, all together. We have mean dishes, dumplings, uh, fish, everything. Everything? Yes. Okay. It's also a fun way to work up an appetite, to take a stroll, maybe walk for 10 or 15 blocks about dinner time if you're not too starving already. Just sniff your way around and you'll find that the prices from one restaurant to the next are quite similar. A small plate of pasta as an appetizer costs about five dollars. A plate of meat or fish would cost about eight dollars. But be aware that you order a la carte in these restaurants. Hard-working street merchants shutting down their sidewalk kiosks for the night. This is from the open market of San Lorenzo. It just goes all day long from about 9 in the morning till about 7 p.m. We featured these markets in other episodes here on World Traveler. And we'll be featuring a lot of the restaurants of Europe in a future series on World Traveler. We'll be going in-depth into the kitchens, talking to the owners. But for now, we're just getting a quick glimpse. Always nice to see some handwritten menus shows a personal touch at work there in the restaurant. Over here on Via Nazionale, which is one of the busy commercial streets of the city, you'll find an eating institution, Le Fonticine. It's a fine spot. We've eaten there several times, always with good reports. The waiters are a riot. They all speak some English, and they're going to crack you up, and they're going to deliver some of the finest pasta you'll ever have. Pasta al dente. And you can go right to the antipasto display table and pick out what you want. Just tell the waiter or serve yourself and get all kinds of fresh vegetables. They have an open grill for the meats and the fish. Open kitchen so you can see what's going on here. Walls stuffed with art. It's been here for over 100 years, Le Fonticine. More of these hardworking street merchants. This brings to a close our evening in Florence, but we're up bright and early the next morning to enjoy sunrise and a view of the church domes and steeples. See here the Dome of San Lorenzo that we were just in earlier in the program, and the great Duomo of the Cathedral of Brunelleschi, towering over all the city. We're enjoying the view from the rooftop breakfast room of our Grand Hotel Baglioni. They have got a fabulous buffet breakfast in a room with a view. This is the view. It, isn't it great? Oh Everybody's my Everybody's smiling with you. Look, <laughs> look at that. Oh, I didn't notice that. You I didn't, didn't I notice that. The, yeah. You're just looking at the food. <laughs> you see what happens now? Oh, darn, I wish I'd brought my Because when I open the top of this. Better than walking at the view. Say, Dennis, you have to... <laughs> the breakfast is terrific. <laughs> But you have to recommend your friends, the, your next to to the Chinese restaurant. It is terrific, the Peking excellent. One. Yeah, and yeah, it's well, cheap. Yeah, that's why I recommended this time. I know it's so great. I, yeah. I couldn't believe my.
You can also go outside and enjoy the view from the rooftop terrace and listen to the morning carillon. As well, you can take your breakfast on the terrace or come back at night for the outdoor restaurant. Speak to me. Yeah, yes, yeah. hi. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Aloha. How was breakfast? <laughs> Great. Yeah, huh? Seconds. And the fruits. You can eat enough at this buffet to get you through most of the day. There's eggs and fruits and all sorts of variety of breads and rolls and croissants. Not every hotel or pensione puts on such a spread. We happen to be fortunate here at our four-star hotel, but many places will just feed you a roll and coffee for breakfast. We're on tour with the Hawaii Geographic Society. We conduct tours through Europe several times each year, starting in Rome and traveling up through Florence and Venice to Switzerland and Paris and ending up in London. And the programs you're watching are filmed during our regular tours. Is that seconds or thirds? First. <laughs> <laughs> about hundred of the uh, small, small stores. So what are you looking for? I'm looking for the uh, bear, the, the goods. So. Um, what do you want to buy in Florence? You're going to go shopping here? Do we have budget for shopping? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, maybe yeah, just buy a pair of Italian shoes or something. Yeah. I don't know, we'll see. A good night rest of today, we shall go, go, go. <laughs> We're going to shop. <laughs> what are you going to buy? Well, I don't know. I want shoe. I regret it. I didn't buy it in Rome. You know, I saw the shoe store, but we were just walking. I didn't stop. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So now I hope I can find. You know where the Ferragamo shop is? Oh, sure. We'll show you all the shoe stores. Good. Yeah. This is the best place in town. Good. I need a Ferragamo shoe. Oh, we wondered the markets, the open markets. We got there before they were closing, so it was great. I mean, there's all, all the kinds of stuff. Yeah, lots of people. Some beans, some ice cream. And yeah. Uh, gelato. Found a great a lot of place. A city of red tile roofs, mm -hmm. right? We're enjoying our final looks at the city for tomorrow will be gone. Next destination, Venice. Bad, huh? ringing in it. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> We've enjoyed our stay in Florence for a couple of days, based here at the Grand Hotel Baglioni. It's a very comfortable four-star hotel right in the center of town made us feel right at home. But now it's time, we've got our bags packed, we're checking out, we're returning our keys, paying off our bills, and we're casting off, leaving Florence behind, continuing on our grand tour of Europe. And our first goal is to get from the hotel to the train station, which is just across the piazza. And instead of having to walk at street level and crossing the busy traffic, there's a very convenient underground pedestrian tunnel. We just roll right on down. We're traveling as a group from Hawaii with the Hawaii Geographic Society. And our next destination is the watery wonderland of Venice. As we arrive at the station after a few minutes, we bring a little bit of Hawaii with us wherever we go. in our first class Eurail train. We're having a great time with each other. And it's fun to think back and reflect upon where we've been so far, Florence and Rome. <laughs> what, did, what did you think of Florence? 
beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. like there's a lot of good uh, people that we met in, in Florence, mm -hmm. especially the waiters and waitresses. Real friendly. Very friendly. Nice people. Very accommodating. Uh huh. And some pretty good food. Oh, it's wonderful food. Uh, <laughs> I bought my fairy goggle shoe that I came for wow. and a leather jacket. <laughs> oh, you bought a lot. And you like them? Oh, yes. 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 Got what I wanted. <laughs> How did you like Florence? Nice. Good yeah. shopping. Good really? shopping. <laughs> yes. And what did you buy? Well, let's see. I got a wallet, mm -hmm. a nice belt, mm -hmm. and uh, what else we got? Oh, you. I bought a bag. You got a bag, yeah. And a wallet also. Mm -hmm. yeah. good. Very good. Hey, that's the place to do it, otherwise you're oh, going to yeah. kick yourself later. Oh, oh yeah, I bought a pair of shoes. Shoes, too. yeah, a nice pair of shoes. Very oh. cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. It fit her perfectly. Yeah. Oh, that counts. Yeah. You put it on Wasn't like Cinderella. Twenty thousand lira. Uh, twenty thousand. Yeah, twenty thousand. Oh, yeah, really? twenty yeah, thousand lira. So that's fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. Wow. Nice pair of leather shoes. Uh -huh. What did you think of Florence? Oh, beautiful. I like it. Really? Real nice. Pretty buildings. Pretty what, building. What did you like about it? What I like about it, the food was good. Mm -hmm. Italian food. Italian food. Spaghetti. Spaghetti. Uh, <laughs> what did you like the, the most about it? Most about it? Oh, well, the, going up that. <laughs> was that Duomo? Was the it? Duomo, yeah. The yeah, Duomo. that was. Right to the top Duomo, of the Duomo. Right. Oh, and, then, and then going across uh, the Arno and then looking at the Duomo from. Uh, across the river. Yeah, uh, from the. Uh, yeah, Michelangelo. No, I thought it was well, beautiful, Jan the uh, red tile roofs and all the buildings, and a uh, very cosmopolitan city, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, the piazzas, and I don't know, I just thought it was lovely. How about but, the shopping? Did you buy anything? Yes, I, I liked the markets, the open markets, yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that in Rome, but mm -hmm. uh, in Florence, you know, yes, that was fun. And the hotel room was nice. Mm -hmm. Nice soft pillows. <laughs> <laughs> it's an elegant hotel. Yeah, really. By Leone. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Did you stay mostly in the quiet areas of town? Yeah, we stayed in the quiet areas, and uh, it's, well, it wasn't as uh, hustle and bustle as Rome. Rome, the cars were going all over the place. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did a good. It was okay. We liked it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was nice. And how'd you like Rome? Yeah. Rome was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the traffic, the traffic was crazy, but it was a, it's a historical city, and, and uh, I, I enjoyed the history, especially when you explained it to us, brought me back to my high school history. Uh -huh. <laughs> all, of, all the good old. Really, so you don't want to miss Rome, right? When you're traveling, you yeah, gotta that, go to Rome. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. It's an important place. Important place, yeah. Very good. The, the Romans are romantic, <laughs> Italians. Italians, yeah, they're really romantic. They stop anywhere on the street, kiss. <laughs> it's really something.